know today I just woke up And I like said this. No, instead of waiting on a good day Waiting around through ups and downs Waiting on something to happen I just said all right, good morning everybody. It's Rob Barber with PinellasLive.com and I'm here today with uh, a good friend of mine, uh, State Senator Jeff Brandis, and he was kind enough to spend some time with us this morning and I've been, uh, I've been really happy about uh, this upcoming sit down with him because there's a lot of great things that Jeff has been working on and I'm just really excited about him still being in office, still coming out the next two years and I'm really excited about a lot of stuff that he has on. So I wanted to make sure that we spend a little time just to share some of the things that he's working on um, because it excites me and I hope it excites you because we're all about the exceptional life that Pinellas is and that's what matters and, uh, and we're all doing it together in community and Jeff is a huge proponent for Pinellas County and I just love that you're here today. So. Well, thanks. Cool. So uh, how we always like to start out is just getting to know a little bit so maybe if you can take a minute or two just to tell people about you and your story and, and why Pinellas. Yeah, so I, you know, my, my family immigrated here in the 40s okay. uh, from, the, from the Cayman Islands. Actually, my grandfather was born in the Cayman Islands yeah. immigrated here. Um, and uh, my grandmother actually came down because her brothers were working for the St. Pete Times. So I actually never give them too much of a hard time because yeah. without them, I yeah. probably wouldn't exist. Um, so, so they met, married, and established a family. He started a little lumber company called Cox Lumber. Okay. Uh, grew that up over the next 60 years to the largest privately owned lumber company in the state. Right. Sold that business in 2006 to Home Depot. Yeah. Um, I thought I was going to spend the rest of my life working in that company. Yeah. And, and God just had other plans for me. So uh, I joined the Army seven days after high school, went to Northside Christian from kindergarten through 12th grade. I mean, I was a lifer <laughs> there. I, uh, and, and Go Mustangs for everybody right, out there. Anyway. Right. So graduated from there, uh, joined the Army seven days later, uh, spent uh, about 11 years in and out of the Army in the Army Reserve, spent okay. 2003, 2004 in Iraq with the 101st, right. uh, and, uh, and decided to run for the Florida legislature in 2010. Uh, ran, won by just under a thousand votes in 2010 for the Florida House. Got gotcha. uh, Ran for the Florida Senate in 2012 because yeah. uh, it was an open seat and, and I thought there was a un unique opportunity. They don't right. come along very often. And so ran for the Florida Senate, got elected to the Senate, uh, ran again in 14 and uh, again in this cycle, 16, ran um, and, and just got reelected. Yeah. Congratulations. Uh, thank you. And I'll run again in 18 and a half, four more years. So, but I'm kind of legislatively, I'm kind of at the top of the roller coaster right now. Sure. Having done six years, um, if I get reelected in 18, I would have about six years left. Right. And so, uh, you know, it's an exciting time. That's awesome. I, I just love the, your story just in general because your transition between different careers, but you're just taking those skills and applying them and then uh, and giving back to the community, which is awesome. Well, I th you learn so much by working for a family business and uh, having grown up here, you know, it, I think this is just an incredible area. Right. Incredible Absolutely. Area. Best area in Florida. Yeah, I agree. Well, that's why we're here. So, uh, well, the next segment we always try to go about is we always talk, try to talk a little bit about Pinellas. So instead of doing that transition, using your time the best, what are some of the issues that you're working on or you see that are, you know, maybe just pick three of the, that are on the top of your mind that you're focusing on that you think are important that you see as a real impact for Pinellas and Hillsborough? Because, I mean, your district runs between both. Right, right. So, so I think, obviously, the number one area that we that I work on is transportation. Okay. I've chaired transportation uh, for the last four years in the Florida Senate and do thinking a lot about the future of transportation policy just mm -hmm. in the region or frankly uh, how it's going to affect our, our area. There's a great treat I read the other day because I work a lot on kind of the future of technology, mm -hmm. electric vehicles, autonomous vehicles, what that looks like. Right. And somebody tweeted out, they said, electric vehicles changes who drives cars. Semi-autonomous, sorry, who, sorry, electric vehicles changes who make cars. Mm -hmm. Semi-autonomous uh, features change who drives cars, and autonomous speakers, features change cities. Yeah. Right? Like, yeah. So, so if we think that the future that we're moving towards right. is much more autonomous, sure. it's going to change our cities. And I think you can see kind of Uber and Lyft as the canary in the coal mines here. Right. Like, there's a business that didn't exist six years ago. Mm -hmm. Had its one billionth ride mm -hmm. December of 2015. Right. And its second billion ride six months later in July. Right, like exponentially right. growth to this business, right. um, and and they've changed their business model a number of times just in that last six year period, right. and and refocused, and so it's exciting to see how quickly the world is trans tr of transportation is changing, and I think autonomous vehicles and semi autonomous vehicles are are like our generation's 
um, experience of, of, of what it would be like a hundred years ago mm -hmm. to move from the horse and buggy to the Model T. Right. Like people go, that's well, interesting. Yeah, I mean how, that much of a shift, right? Right, I mean, right. How they go? Well, how are cities going to be affected by autonomous vehicles? And I said, well, how was cities affected by the Model T? Right. right? It changed everything. It I mean, did. The entire way that we lived would, would radically transform. Even fashion changed, Correct, right? Right. Right. <laughs> the big. I mean, the biggest hurdle 115, 120 years ago was like, what do we do with all this animal dung? Right. And the dead animals on the side of the right. road. Like that was a big problem <laughs> for communities back then. Sure. Probably for St. Petersburg too. Yeah. Um, so now we're transitioned now and thinking about well, not only are cars getting more autonomous, they're also getting more electric. Yeah. And so that changes. That has radical transformational effects on on. Uh, the community, but on the power grid mm -hmm. and all of these other things. So, I mean, a really interesting time in the world of transportation. Yeah, you know, it's, it's just when I think about it, it's kind of like, you know, we had the internet in the 90s that came around and transformed a lot of things, and then social media came around, which is really social media is just another transformation of the internet, right? right. And Facebook's only been around 10 years, and mm -hmm. look at what's happened in that time. Yes. So, like, the same things happen for transportation. Right. And, uh, and just so much of just me being in the community in Pinellas. A lot of talk, I t you know, when I talk to commercial uh, real estate investors, commercial and, um, property owners, transportation is a top, mm -hmm. it's a top topic sure. for, for the Tampa Bay region. Right, right. So how do you get around? I mean, that's the yeah. big question, right? Right. And so in the last couple of years, we have these major projects going on. We have the 118th Corridor, mm -hmm. which will allow you to essentially go from the Sunshine Skyway Bridge to north of Countryside Mall without a stoplight. <laughs> that's huge because that yeah. essentially creates the north-south corridor. Right. And then for Pinellas, the big question and the big challenge is how do I get east-west, right? I need three or four east-west corridors right. because you're going to have this north-south spine. How do I jut off there and do go east-west? And sure. those are some of the questions we're working on now. Nice. And so um, you've got that. You've got the Tampa Bay Express project going on. You've got the Leroy Selman extender all the way down Gandy that's right. going on. And if you kind of take the 30,000-foot view, you, you can kind of see what the project's going on. We really are trying to address many of the, the kind of structural challenges we have um, with, with the road system. Right. And then the question is, well, how do we include more mass transit in that piece? Because a lot of people, that's a major area of, of concern. And I think um, I'm, I'm really focused in on bus rapid transit. Okay. Because it doesn't require us to build an entirely new system. Mm. And if we agree that the world is getting more autonomous, mm -hmm. Um, in this time between the lightning and the thunder, where we know <laughs> that this world is going to change because we're starting to see the effects, but we really haven't felt it. Right. We really felt sure. the effects yeah, of yeah, vehicles. Yeah. Um, how do you prepare? And my guidance to cities and counties and it, it is really, in that time, you focus on maximizing your options. Mm. Right? And if you maximize your options, what that means to me is uh, focus on bus rapid transit, manage lanes, um, fixing your infrastructure. Mm -hmm. to Because... Whatever the world's going to hold in the future, you're going to be able to use those assets going sure. forward. You'll be ready. Correct. Right. Unlike a rail line, which is not adaptable to, to really any of this. I mean, it's a rail line, I would imagine 100 years ago, kind of has a fixed guided system on it. Right. Um, not, more, you know, not uh, a, an Uber model of autonomous vehicles. Sure. So instead of, instead of creating new, take what you have and create the options. Yeah. Focus on maximizing your options, yeah. especially for a community like ours where, you know, uh, we're built out. Mm -hmm. And it would cost us a hundred million dollars a mile, <laughs> and then you still say, well, "All right, well then, how do I get people that first and last mile?" Because I still haven't fixed that. Right. And so when you look around the state, I mean, we look at kind of Sunrail as an mm -hmm. example of mm -hmm. what could potentially happen. Well, Sunrail's ridership is down mm. year over year, mm. month over month. Sometimes. I didn't know that. Yeah. And they're really struggling to find the model that works mm. for that entity, and so. You know, I think you're seeing, at least in Pinellas, you're seeing uh, our local PSDA really is kind of turn the corner and creating these partnerships with Uber or Lyft, with local tab companies right. to try to solve that first and last mile problem. To do, they just announced today a, a, a grant that they received to do disability uh, transportation uh, for Lyft. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, really kind of innovative prototype kind of models right. that I think we can scale and go around the state. That's exciting. That's exciting. Well, we're just a few minutes in, and so I see we got a few people on, and thanks for joining us today. Again, we're here with uh, State Senator Jeff Brandis, and again, thank you for your time. So what else are you working on? We talked about transportation, and I love, the, I love your, your, uh, your line about the, difference, the, the time between the lightning and the thunder, because that is true in a lot of areas. So what, right. else, what else is the state um, going through that process on or so, you're focusing on? So I think criminal justice reform is kind of where my heart is for the next couple of years, okay. and that's something that, that I'm pretty passionate that, that Florida has, is really lagging in. Mm. 
Um, we have 100,000 people in the state incarcerated in, behind bars. Okay. We have another 50,000 in some form of supervision. Okay. And, um, and as other states are looking around and saying, all right, what can we do better? Mm-hmm. Can we do drug treatment better? Can we do, can we do um, mental health better? Right. And, can, and how many people are in jail um, because they simply can't pay the bond? Mm. Right? We have people who like 30, 60, 90 days in jail because they can't come up with $500,000 to pay their bond and, right. and, um, while they're awaiting a trial. So th- there are some real things that we can do to radically transform the criminal justice system that other states are really leaders in. And, and not like soft on crime states. Like Texas is actually a leader in criminal justice reform. And, you know, that's really, and, and they're really kind of pushing the envelope of what we can do. And what they're, and while they're seeing massive reforms in their criminal justice system, right. they're also seeing a reduction in violent crimes. It's very similar to where Florida's reduction is. Right. And so we know that there's, we can do a lot more, save a lot of money, um, treat people better, right. and really focus on creating better people when they come out of the system sure. instead of better convicts when mm-hmm. they come out of the system. Because today, and I think one of the challenges is in the last 20 or 30 years, there really hasn't been this opportunity to do criminal justice reform like it is today. It's one of these bipartisan issues where we have kind of the Baptists and the bootleggers that get together, right. this kind of broad coalition. One of the rare institutes where you'll see like the Koch brothers, the ACLU, <laughs> Pew, all on the same side right. saying it's time to reform the criminal justice system. Yeah. And so I'm excited to work on that for the next few years. It's going to be a big project and, and it's going to be a lot of fun. So you've already started in that process we've, then? We've already started. I mean, we're kind of gathering the data, hiring uh, consultants to, to really help us think through this. I want to talk to people who've done this in 10 other states. I mm-hmm. want to understand. And I want, you know, I want the community to be involved in helping make some of these decisions because these are tough decisions and we need to talk through them and understand how they're going to affect uh, our communities. Um, because, you know, doing more drug treatment, doing more work release, doing more uh, uh, mental health, in the community. Mm-hmm. I mean, one thing that we know is that uh, recidivism is lower if you can get family visits, right? I mean, it seems yeah, which it seems, seems, yeah, rational, it seems right? right? <laughs> but if you get arrested at Pinellas and you end up going to prison, mm-hmm. you're probably going to serve time in the panhandle. So then, really, so how you know, right, that, you, it's you not don't get, happen. you're not going to get family visits right. up there, right? right. And, and so, uh, how do we make um, how do we make these things that we know work? How do we use the data mm-hmm. in some of these other states where we've actually seen the results, right? And say, all right, well, what can Florida do to kind of try to match those results in the positive aspects that we, what we see? Right. So it's a fun issue, <laughs> and, and it's a challenging one. And you know, I think if but, you look at like our office, mm-hmm. we try to focus on ideas that move the needle. Whatever area of right. policy that we're sure. in, some other legislator will name the roads. That's fine. Sure. Um, but we're going to try to reform the criminal justice system, or we're going to really try to lead in transportation. And I think we've done that. That's exciting. You know, I mean, just you know, the opportunity and just being around you a little bit, I can see that you know, again, those things are important. The things that you say move the needle. I mean, there's no reason to just do this if we're really not going to make change. Right. Right. I mean, if I'm going to go up to Tallahassee and spend the hundred days away from my wife and kids. Yeah. I want to do something that is going to to really impact my community and, and leave a legacy. Um, you know, I I grew up in Pinellas. I love this community, and I think we have this unique time to to really um, change the world mm-hmm. and kind of leave your dent in the universe, as, as Steve Jobs would say. Sure. And so this is just my my chance and and the things that I found kind of what I'm passionate about and where my heart is. Yeah. That's awesome. That's awesome. Well, Jeff, we kind of like to end our segments with um, a little bit of imparting with the community that sees this, whether they see it today or 20 years from now. And, you know, just one of the things maybe get your insights on in your heart is, is if someone wants to get involved in the community and serve, you know, and maybe go down the track where you're at or, or at different levels in, in civil service or community, you know, what would, what would your advice be t- to them? So, uh, you know, I think the, the first thing is, like, you can do anything you want. Like, you can get involved in anything you want to do. But you, you heard it here. You can do anything you right. want. But you have to start. Like, you have to start on the journey somewhere, like right. somewhere along the line. So whether that's in your church, mm-hmm. whether that's with your local chamber of commerce, your city, you're on your street. Right. There are opportunities for you to get involved. Um, you know, there are opportunities for you to go to schools and mentor. There are opportunities for you to get involved in the Boys and Girls Club. They are right. always looking for good leaders and good people. And you can have an incredible impact and the lives of, of those individuals. But 
you got to take take the time to do it. We got to start. I always think you know you know in our church we talk a lot about tithing and, and it's always tithing is you know money related, mm-hmm. but I always think it should be time related too. Sure. Like I think ten percent of your time should be spent of your life and just carve it out should be spent in service to your community. Mm-hmm. Like the only reason anybody ever does like to me uh, why I do this job is like I get to serve God. Yeah. And I get to serve my my fellow man. Sure. And like what else is there? Yeah. Like everything, yeah, everything else kind of that. goes away, right? Like what else sure. is there, right? Yeah. I get to serve God, serve my fellow man, yeah. and 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 be a servant in my community, and and work on interesting, challenging problems. Like no, none of my constituents has ever come to me and say, "We want you to fix the criminal justice system." That's boy, that's a really challenge. Like if you ranked that on a right. scale from like one to a hundred mm-hmm. issues, mm-hmm. like it's jobs, education, insurance, down the list, right. and maybe prisons would be ninety nine. <laughs> <laughs> right, we don't have any prisons in St. Petersburg, and no, no prisons in right. Pinellas. The closest one is Zephyr Hills. Sure, um, but in this process, you kind of see here's an area where there's a huge problem, mm-hmm. and and you know what, nobody else is really taking it on. So darn it, why don't I do it? Sure, and uh, and and the, this this process is set up in a way that if you want to lead on a topic, go ahead. I mean, you can do whatever you want, but, you, but only you can do it. Right. Right. You have to do You it. have to build the coalition. Right. You have to bring other legislators wrong. You have to build this community and, and, and of, of support mm-hmm. and find the experts, find the guides to take you <laughs> through this process. Uh, and that's what I love about it. Because this job will give everything that you're willing to give plus 20%. Right, right. Take it, I mean, yeah. it will ask more <laughs> yeah. for you than you're willing to, you know. And, uh, and, and you have to love it and be passionate about sure. it. Um, and, and I'm blessed to have a wife and a family that supports it. That's awesome. So, that's awesome. And a community. I mean, yeah, I mean, absolutely. Well, listen, guys, that's our time today. I hope this was helpful for you. Again, the whole purpose of we're doing this every day is we're just trying to bring more of the exceptional out about what it is to live in Pinellas and be in Pinellas, whether it be community or the people or the things to do. Um, Jeff, thanks so much. No, my pleasure. I really appreciate no, it. Love doing it. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. Like we always like to say, we love you guys. Uh, Have an amazing Thursday, and um, we'll see you tomorrow. Make sure to share this if you know someone who wants to, uh, who has um, some interest in some of these topics that Jeff is talking about. Leave me some comments. Love to give Jeff some feedback, but make sure you share it. All right, guys. Thanks so much. All right.